Well, hey friends, it's Mandy with Sweetly Home and today is Trim Healthy Tuesday. Today I'm gonna share with you how to make stromboli. So I usually make stromboli with a cauliflower crust. The thing is, is that can be a little time consuming. With cauliflower crust, you really have to make sure that all the water is out of the cauliflower to make the dough really hold together well. But today I don't have a lot of time but we really still want to have stromboli. So I'm going to try a new recipe. It looks super simple and I think it looks really delicious. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this recipe. I'm hoping it tastes good. The reviews are really good. I always tend to read the comments when I'm finding a recipe online, like in a blog. My tip to you is always check the comments because there will be tips and tricks of people who have actually tried the recipe and they kind of let you know if the recipe is a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And most of the time they're thumbs up. As always, I will have the recipe link down in the description box so that you can refer to the blog post with the instructions and the pictures and everything of that nature. So be sure to check out that post for full recipe details. Let's get going. Okay, so for your ingredients, you are going to need one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella. You're also going to need some Italian seasoning, some cream cheese. You'll just need two tablespoons. And this is a third less fat uh, cream cheese. You can use full fat on Trim Healthy Mama. This will be an S meal. However, doing one third less fat just cuts down on the calories. So while we're not counting calories with Trim Healthy Mama, when you can save a few calories, it makes it makes sense. So we're going to do that with our cream cheese. You also need one egg, some almond flour, and Trim Healthy Mama baking blend. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese in your saucepan and two tablespoons of cream cheese. And then you're going to melt these two together completely. So I've got them here on my stove and I've got my temperature set to medium and we're just gonna kind of watch this and stir it and get it going. So the recipe calls to melt this in a microwave. I don't have a microwave, so I'm just doing it here on my stove, left-handed and I'm not left-handed. Um, I'm thinking that I may just turn down the heat a little bit and continue to do this. So this is probably a process that you're gonna to wanna to make sure to just stand and do um, and keep a good eye on it because this has the potential to burn really quick, I think. I have been getting everything ready for um, the dry ingredients, but I'm just gonna kind of hold off until this is melted. Okay, so that took all of a couple minutes. I'm going to pull this off the heat and finish putting the rest of my dry ingredients inside of the food processor. So in the food processor, I have one egg, a half cup of the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend, a quarter cup of almond flour, and a quarter teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I'm just gonna go ahead and pulse this together. She recommends using the dough blade to your food processor. I don't have that, so I'm just using the regular kind of chopping blade. I'm gonna pulse this together to incorporate the egg because once I put in the cheese mixture, which goes in here next, um, I don't want the egg to cook because the mixture is hot. So I'm gonna incorporate that really quick and then get that cheese mixture in here. Well, here's a major recipe fail for you. My food processor motor just burned out. Seriously, I'm so irritated right in this very moment. I use my food processor all the time. Never had anything like this happen. So irritated. I think I had it on level one for all of like three seconds instead of just pulsing. <sighs> So in this moment, I'm just gonna throw it in my KitchenAid and hope that will do the work because Mama is P.O.'d. The recipe calls for putting some parchment paper down, putting your dough on top, 
and then putting a piece of parchment on top of that and then rolling it out into a rectangle. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So after rolling it out, here is what it looks like. I did go ahead and trim off some of the sides here and I added it down to the bottom just to try and make it a little bit bigger. Um, the recipe doesn't call for that, but that's what I decided to do. So the dough is really sticky, so you definitely want your parchment paper, of course, and you actually end up baking your stromboli on this bottom piece of parchment. Um, so now you put your toppings on. I've got just some of my Hunt's tomato sauce. I'll probably sprinkle a little Italian seasoning on that. Maybe a bit of Parmesan. Um, and then I've got salami and ham and I think that's it. And of course some uh, cheese as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the toppings on. So here's what the stromboli looks like with my toppings on. I did salami and the ham and mozzarella cheese. There's sauce on the bottom with a tiny bit of cheese on top of that. So then what we're going to want to do is use a sharp knife and make small diagonal cuts on the outer thirds of the dough. I will show you what that lo looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay, so here are what your cuts are going to look like. Okay, so here's what it looks like and what mine looks like in the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold the top edge down and then the bottom edge down. I used my parchment paper to kind of move the dough because the dough is still sticky. And then what you're going to want to do is take and bring all of those flaps over on both sides. Now, in hindsight, I wish that I had made my stromboli just a little bit wider. This is what the final picture looks like on the pin. And as you can see, her uh, slits, or whatever you want to call them, are a lot longer than mine. So, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some. I don't know. It looks like this is going to be okay. Um, I guess the taste. We'll taste the taste test will be the real the real key but um, this to be totally honest this is actually less finicky than my stromboli crust with cauliflower <laughs> of all things so anyways your next thing is going to be to move this onto a baking sheet and bake at 425 um, let me just check the time bake at 425 for 15 to 18 minutes so that's what we're gonna do. Can you hear that sizzle? Oh my gosh, y'all, I'm really excited how this turned out. So I put it in for 15 minutes. I probably let the timer go a little bit longer because I happened to lay down and was <laughs> searching Instagram because mama needed a timeout. And the beeper went off just a few times because I was way too lazy to get up. There's some real life mama moments for you. Anyways, I think this looks delicious. Um, and so this is how my plate looks. I just threw on some cucumber that I had in the fridge, some steamed broccoli, and our stromboli. I have a little side of um, spaghetti sauce for dipping. And that's what's for dinner tonight. So here's the wrap up of the stromboli and my thoughts. This is the first time I've ever tried this recipe, so I was a little unsure how it was gonna turn out. First of all, I would recommend having all of your dry ingredients all ready to go in your food processor or your KitchenAid mixer. On that note, I would also say, if your food processor does not have a dough blade, do not attempt this recipe in your food processor if you want your food processor to live. I don't know, maybe mine was just about ready to go. I don't know, it's not even a year old, so I'm really frustrated about that. Um, however, the dough mixed beautifully inside of my KitchenAid. 
Um, I did use the dough, uh, attach the dough hook on, in my KitchenAid to combine the dough. You want to make sure that it's put together really well. Secondly, I think next time I would make my stromboli just a little bit wider. I would not probably have cut off those edges like I told you that I did. Um, I'm really pleased though with the size. I think for our family this is going to be perfect. The recipe says that it's for six to eight, um, six to eight portion sizes, and I think that'll probably be good. I had hoped to make um, two, one to have as leftovers, and then let's face it, it's Friday night and. It's Friday night in our world, <laughs> and I don't know. We love to mow down on some good food on Friday, so and I think it's gonna be a keeper recipe. I really do think I'll probably make it again. It was easy to do, um, just it was easy to do, but it was a little, a little finicky. Um, when you are making traditional all purpose flour recipes and you're retweaking them with alternate flours, like nut flours, and ingredients that are not just flour and baking soda and things of that nature, really simple traditional ingredients. Um, sometimes you have to fuss a bit, and that is just some of what I know I have to do for my health um, because I've overindulged on the flour things and it's not been good for my waistline. So. Um, just bear that in mind. Give yourself plenty of time. It cooks really quick and the dough came together really, really nicely. Um, it, like Once I got all the tweaks out and wasn't filming, um, this probably could have all been done in half an hour. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me in this A Trim Healthy Tuesday video. If you know somebody who is a Trim Healthy Mama or someone interested in the program, I would love it if you would share this video or this series with them. That would um, help my channel out a lot and hopefully it would help them out as well. I'm just a mama working through the program. I'm not an expert by any means, but I like to share what I'm going through and hopefully um, encourage you along the way. So I will see you in my next video. Keep on keeping on, mamas. Bye.